Hello, my name is Miles McNamara. I am the developer from Smiles Plugins, and I'm very happy to announce the release of my new search and filtering plugin. Um, in this video, I'm going to go ahead and go over how to recreate the default WP Job Manager search and filtering page. It's this one right here. Um, using the plugin, which will give you a, a brief overview of how everything works and how to set things up and what poss possibility and options you have. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So what you will notice is on the uh, jobs page, basically a page that has the jobs or resumes shortcode on it, you will see a new menu item up here, which is the search and filtering uh, menu item. This allows you to enable it, disable it, do a couple other things. The main actual list table items you can also find in here. As you'll notice under job listings, you see the search and filtering menu items. So the first thing that you need to do is after you install the plugin is to come to this page where you can add in the new sections. So the search and filtering is separated by what are called sections. Each section is a group of fields that you configure similar to this right here. You can do a short code. There's a bunch of different options. So let's go ahead and get started and create a new one. When you install the search and filtering plugin in the next release, it will actually go ahead and have the default ones for you. But just to show you how it works, I'm going to go ahead and run through that. So you come here, you click add new. This will ask you to enter in some kind of a label to describe it. So for this label, we're just going to say top default search, click next, and this is where you can configure the output. You have two options of the way to output uh, search and filtering sections. You can either use a short code to output it or you can have it automatically output based on the locations that are available. You'll notice here we have different ones, filters top, filter search top, search bottom, below listings. So what we're going to want to do in this one is we're going to actually do this for filter search top. And I'll describe these a little bit more in some documentation, but just to get things rolling, let's go ahead and go through this. So we're going to save that section. And now you'll notice we have here, this is a short code that you can use to output it if you want. But as you notice, we also configured it to show in the uh, that specific page. So let's go ahead and click done. And now you'll see that we have this default top search section shows here. There's a short code if you want to use it, and it shows you the auto output is configured back on the actual jobs page, if we refresh the page, you'll notice that it still shows the default one. That is because, as you'll notice here in the top right corner, we have the custom search and filtering disabled. When you have the custom search and filtering disabled, it will not show any of the custom sections. It will allow the standard output. Uh, this just gives you a way to go back and forth and view them and do a couple different things. So you can either enable it from here or from the front end on this one. So let's go ahead and enable custom search and filtering. And now you'll notice we have the listings, but now that original search and filtering is gone. You'll notice you have this section here where you can start configuring things. You'll also notice under this drop down, the menu options have changed. You can disable the editing, you can go to the section list, or you can disable the custom search and filtering. So right now, we are in edit mode. That's how we see this little box around here. You see the save, the edit, add a field. Um, so basically what this does is when you're in the edit, um, you're in the actual editing mode, we'll say, uh, you will be able to edit all the fields, move them around, uh, whatever you want. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and add a field. So you have two ways to add a field from a new section. You can either click this plus button or you can click right here in the middle and this will automatically add a field. So this right here is just basically one of the fields in our section. If you hover in the left hand cor top left corner of any of these fields, you'll notice you have the edit and the delete buttons. This is where you can edit or delete a field. You can also right click on it and it'll give you menu options to choose from as well. So let's go ahead and click on the edit button. And when you click on the edit button, you'll notice that it opens this side window over here where you can configure the field. By default, the first fields you add are all going to be spacer fields, but that's not the only type of field you have. You click the drop down, you'll notice we have a ton of other different field options that you can choose from. These are just the initial field types. I will be adding more as the plugin progresses and is further developed. So to go ahead and get started, we're just going to choose a standard text field. Now in this text field, first one we're going to do is we're going to actually do the keywords one. So I'll go ahead and just put in keywords. Uh, because this one doesn't show the label, I'm not going to click show label, but just so you can see, 
what it does is whenever you click the show label, this will actually show a label above the box. So right now it's not actually showing it because WP Job Manager has some CSS, general CSS to hide labels, but I can show you how to do that in another video. So right here, the placeholder, this is what's going to show in there as a placeholder before the user actually clicks. So you'll notice as I start changing these things, you can notice that it updates in there. And so this is the reason that I built this was to give you a front end UI to where you can configure and edit everything in real time, see how it changes, play with it, move it around. Uh, it really gives, makes it a lot easier to build things. So the default value here is if you want a default value to be shown, you most of the time will not ever want to use this. You may only want to use this whenever you want a specific, when the actual form is loaded, you want it to automatically search for specific values when you would use that. The next part you're gonna to have to select is you notice this search tab here. So field and then search. Search tab is where you're gonna choose the search source. Uh, and just so you know, any of these little question mark things you see here, if you need more information about what the field is, just click on it and it'll show you a little description below it. So for this one, I'm gonna click here and you'll notice in this drop down we have a bunch of different WGP job manager default fields. You'll notice it's keywords, location, categories, job types. Then you'll have the taxonomies that you can search from, and then you'll also have all of your meta fields from any custom fields you've added or any default fields that exist. The default one here for WP Job Manager, what we're gonna choose is the keywords field because that is the one that we want it to search. Now you'll notice below that you have a trigger. This trigger is whether or not you want it to automatically search for, for values once a user starts entering something. So if, for instance, say you hide the, you don't actually put a search jobs button or anything on there, and you just want it to start searching after the user enters, say, five keys or whatever, or five characters, that's where you would set it to automatic. Now you'll notice here you have the after, the debounce, and the type. So as I just mentioned, if you wanted it to start searching, this will basically cause, if we have it set to milliseconds or seconds, it basically says that after, which right here we have 500, which is in milliseconds, 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. But if you have it set to milliseconds, that means that any time a user enters in or hits a key, after 500 milliseconds or half a second, then it will update the listings. Same with the debounce right here. The debounce is a basically to prevent excessive load on your server from constantly updating the listing. So even if you have this set to character, so let's change this to characters. So we'll say after the user enters, we'll say four characters, uh, we want it to do an automatic search update. We also want to keep the debounce at 500, second, 500 milliseconds, which is half a second, so that the trigger to update it will not be automatically done. So imagine if a user starts entering in, you know, four characters and they wait half a second before they enter in the next character. The debounce delay basically prevents the query or the listings from being updated until after this many seconds have passed since the last key was pressed or the last selection was made. So we'll go ahead and keep that the same. We'll keep that the same. So we've got it searching the characters. That. So then we can go ahead and click and save this. And now you'll notice we have this key with the keywords one here. And here's the best part about this UI is you can drag, drop, change everything to look however you want it to. So we've got the keywords one on here. Let's go ahead and add another, um, let's add the location one. So right here, we're gonna click add. So it adds another field. We'll move this over here. Then we're gonna come here. We're gonna edit this one. And this one is gonna be another text field. And this one will be location and we'll set the location as the placeholder and then search we're going to change this to location as well same thing with as the keywords were we have it set to automatic so let's go ahead and change that to after five characters with a default debounce of 500 seconds and then we'll go ahead and save that and now let's go ahead and adjust this so that they're full width on here and now, if you wanted to, if you remember when I was talking about the disabling the editing, if you want to, that's the same thing. The disable editing is the same thing as this little eye icon here. The reason for this is that while you're developing and you're kind of designing this, 
you're gonna there's gonna be instances where you're gonna want to see how it's gonna look to the user so to quickly do that you just click the I button or click here and go to disable editing and this takes you out of edit mode this is what the user will see you'll notice if you hover over here in the top left you'll notice you have this edit button that shows and this only shows for administrators as well just so you know but if you want to go back into edit mode you just click that and now you're back in edit mode so let's go ahead and clean these up a little bit and get a little bit of spacing on them so to match the default ones uh, we're going to need to edit some of the spacing on here. And so this is where this second tab up here next to the configuration is. You'll notice the spacing. And the spacing is how you can define custom spacing, either margin or padding. So right now we're in basic mode, which means I can click on this button and I can type in, you know, 5px. And as you notice, as I type that, it automatically updates here in the box. And this sets a margin. So when you're using the basic ones, and I just hit the enter key there to, to do that. You'll notice that this sets a margin when you do the basic mode. This basically says set a top, left, right, and bottom margin of whatever I set here. Same with padding. If you set padding on here and it's in basic mode, <clears throat> that will do padding left, right, top, bottom. I'm going to remove this because we don't need that. If you want to get more specific about it, you can switch over to advanced mode. And now advanced mode, you'll notice you have left, right, bottom, top. This allows you to customize each one individually instead of just one. It basically makes it easier to do everything. So we're just going to use a basic 5px. So I'm going to go ahead and set it back to basic because that's all we really need right now. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click save. It saves a field. And let's do the same thing for the location field. 5px. Go back. Click save. And there we go. Now you'll notice we have that spacing between these fields that we had just defined. So let's go back into edit mode. Now we need to add the category drop down. So let's go ahead and add an additional one. And then we're going to go in here and edit this. And this one is going to be a single select drop down. So we'll go to single select drop down. And this one is going to be category. And then for the placeholder, let's select, choose a category. Okay, and then on the search source, same thing. We're going to come here and we're going to select our categories. You can do this with taxonomies as well. Uh, it's totally up to you. So go ahead and select categories. Now you'll notice once we select the categories, you'll notice we have another tab here, which is data source. So whenever you're using a field type that can have multiple values that is not a standard text input, you have to select where the data source comes from. The data source is going to be the options and values that are shown. So by default, it's going to use the field value. So if I select field values, that's going to use any of the categories or the taxonomies you have set up. If you, for some reason, wanted to use your own custom values, you can select use custom values, and then you can add your own custom values, a value, a label, whatever you want. For this one, I'm going to keep it at the field values because that's what we want to use. Let's go ahead and set the spacing on this to 5px as well to match the other ones. And let's go ahead and save that. So now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this all the way over. And you'll notice, you see, all these are the default field values that were set up for that taxonomy that field itself we'll say so space that up there a little bit and now let's go ahead and add the submit button so we add another field click here change it from a spacer and then let's go ahead and do a button and the button's going to be search jobs button type and so the button type you have a few different button types here you have input reset standard button or even a button as a link. There's a few different things you can do here. It's really up to you which one you want to use. Depending on the different themes, some themes have specific styling for links. And in here, you can actually put in a class if you need you know, the button class on it or whatever it is. Um, that's where you can use that one. Uh, you can also set the caption, which is going to be what it says. So for this one, we're going to actually use a standard, uh, standard button and what we're going to do here is the caption is going to be search jobs and right here you'll notice the action 
So with actions, the action allows you to specify what the button does when it's clicked. So you can either have it reset the filters or update the search results. In some instances, you may want to leave this as if, say, you're using the input button or the reset button, you may want to just leave those standard and the form will ha handle it itself. Uh, but just to make sure that things work correctly, you can, you can select whether you want it to reset or update the results. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one to update the results. Got that there. Let's go ahead and add some spacing on it as well, just to kind of clean it up. And then we'll come back here. So we have this, and let's go ahead and save this. Now to match the existing listings, we're going to come here and pull this all the way across. Now to match the existing filters, I want this to span the full width of this whole um, section or this field that we have here, because you see right now it kind of just stays that size. So that's where you can come in here and go back to the edit of the field. And that's where we have this next tab here, the styles. So we have the spacing, which you can define custom spacing. We also have styles where you can add your own custom CSS to either the input, which would be, in this case, would be the button. Um, for these other fields, it would be this the text input. Uh, the label, if that's showing. So right now we don't have the label showing, so there's no need for that. And then the wrapper CSS. So the wrapper CSS is the HTML element that is around this entire piece here. So say you wanted to change this whole section to a, a different color background, uh, you can set that as well. So I'll just, just to show you real quick, go ahead and set this background. You see, so that turns it red. So I don't really want to keep that red, so I'm just not going to put anything there, but just, to, just so you kind of understand what does what. So for this input CSS, I want this to span the full width of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a width of 100%. And bam, there you go. Now it's showing full width across the page. Go ahead and save that. And now we'll go ahead and use this. And so I'll do the disable editing from here just so you can see, which like I said, is the same thing as hitting that button right there. And now this is what the user is gonna see. So you can see, you can select design. Um, and so you'll notice I didn't change this field to be manual. I still have his automatic. Since we're using the button, we're going to want to go ahead and switch those now. So I guess I'll let me just go ahead and give you an example real quick. So we'll come here and go Airbnb. And you'll notice it went ahead and updated automatically without me hitting that button. Reason being is because if you remember when we set this up for the search, we had it set to automatic. So after I entered those four, four, four characters and a half a second passed, it went ahead and updated the listings. So let's go ahead and change that to manual because now I want the user to have to click the search jobs button to do it. So we'll go ahead and click that. And let's change the location one as well. Change that to manual. And then let's change this one as well to manual. Now, when we go back to this, you'll notice nothing updated. So I removed the keywords, nothing updated. That's because I didn't click the button and it's now set to manual. So if I click search jobs, it now updates everything. If I try typing that in again, you'll notice nothing happens. You have to click search jobs. And that's kind of the way that the manual and the automatic works. Uh, most users will probably want to use the manual or the automatic one. And having the search button on here, doesn't there is no conflict so if you have the search button here there is no conflict if you wanted it to automatically search as well it's completely up to you whatever you want to do um, to change it move it around so now that we've got these going now let's go ahead and add the filters below which actually go below this section right here so what we're gonna need to do because of the way that the default job manager works if I was to add the filters as another field below here, just like this, and I would set this and have the filters in here, it's not going to show with that custom background that it had before. And the reason is just because the default WP Job Manager has some custom styling to show how that is. So the way to do this instead is to create another section, which we can then set in a different location, and then it will actually have the formatting and show the way we want it to. 
So what I'm going to do is just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and save this section. That section is good. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to go, want to go in here and we're going to want to create a new section. So what I'll do here is I'm going to do this and this is going to be job types. Do next. And this is specific for the default WP job manager template layout. Um, just because I went through and I checked everything, I know that it needs to be this filters bottom section. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. We have that. She's good to go. So save that. And you'll notice now we have this new section here. Now, if we come back over here, refresh this page. You'll notice we have now have this new section here below here. Now what we can do here is this is where we can set up the uh, job types that we had before. So to go ahead and do that, what we need to do is to go ahead and add another field. So let's add a field. We have this field here. Let's go ahead and edit it. And then we're going to change this to a checkbox field type. Or I'm sorry, not checkbox, checklist, because it's going to be multiple checkboxes. And then we'll just go ahead and set this as job types. The label is not required, especially if you're not showing the label, but it's good to have there just so that when you're editing and going through things, you know what is what. So I strongly recommend that you keep that on there and you actually put something on there just to make it easier. So with the search, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to select the source, which is going to be job types. <clears throat> and then we're going to want to change it to manual because we want it to be manually updated. Now you'll notice and you'll notice if you click outside, it'll close the uh, edit window. Um, if you do that without saving, it's not going to, if, if I were to refresh this page right now, this would not be here. So you just need to make sure to click save if you really want it to save that those values, either here or when you're editing the field. So let's go back in here. Actually, let's close this and let's go ahead and make this full width. So we've got that there and let's go ahead and edit this. And then we've got here, we've got it set for that. And data source, we're going to select field values. Now you'll notice there's another section here that is wrapper. You see full wrapper, input wrapper. So what this is, is for specific field types, you can set a full wrapper and an input wrapper to go around, for instance, a checklist. So I specifically added this feature to be able to recreate the default WP Job Manager layout because the default layout for the job types does not actually use a standard checklist. It actually uses what are called, what is a HTML list item. So it's a uh, UL and an LI. So in order to do that, we have to match some of this to be able to do that. So in this one for the full wrapper, and this is specifically for WP Job Manager, um, or at least for the default template, this can be used to set up your own custom layout that you want. But in this instance, I'm just showing you this just to show you how it's done with WP Job Manager. So uh, we have that there for the, that and the input wrapper. So this is going to be LI. So you'll notice they, they have these list items. So you see that it's list items. So the problem is that WP Job Manager has that custom CSS I was talking about, which requires the job types class on it. And now you'll notice once I added that, you notice how it has its own background and it looks a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. This again is like I mentioned is just specifically because of the way WP Job Manager has this section. Um, so by adding job types right there, what that does is that actually adds this class to this full wrapper, which is that UL item, which then outputs that the styling that you see on there. And that's kind of the way that works. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and pull this up a little bit. Save it again. Now let's hide it. Okay. Now that looks good, except for the fact that you'll notice we have the little, there looks like there's a little section right below there where I can see it's the gray on there. So in order to fix that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into edit mode and I'm gonna come back in here and edit this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to that styles again. And what I'm gonna do is for that wrapper style, if you remember, it's the one we changed to the uh, background color. On here, I'm actually going to change this to a height of 100%. What that should do is that should then set the CSS for that element to go around it. Now, it doesn't look like it's doing it. Which of course, that's going to be the way it is. Not making things easy. 
So let's go in here. It might just be because I have it there. Wrapper height. We set that 100%. Let's just refresh the page and see if that. Okay. So I'm probably missing something here because it should be setting it there. If I remember correctly. And the reason I say that is because I've already done this once. I was just trying to redo this, but let's just go ahead and go back to editing. So. I'll look into this and see why it's not doing that to make sure the styles actually work. Um, but as you can see, it's <clears throat> it. Well, actually, there's there's on this section. I forgot about that. So here we go. So let's see. It's here. Okay. So it's I was wrong. That's not where we needed to add that. I apologize. So let's go back to the style. So we don't need this here. Let's remove that. What we actually need to do is that, if you remember that job types class that we had there for this one right here, this job types. So that is the actual, the UL that is surrounding this. It's not the wrapper. Um, that was my misunderstanding of it. So what we have our option there to do is in the section configuration, which is this top one right here, section configuration, you'll notice we have the same thing, spacing and styles. The only difference for when you're editing a section is that you have a custom CSS header. So right here you can show the editor and this is where you can enter in your own custom CSS to be shown. So in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do job types and then I'm going to set this to a height of 100%. Now you'll notice there's a alert here that shows you that you have changed or removed custom CSS code. So what's going to happen is that when I save <coughs> this field it's going to refresh the page. Reason being is because any custom CSS that you add right here, the way it is actually output is handled through internal WordPress outputting and it will actually go through and the page needs to refresh in order to inline those CSS values that you've set here, this custom CSS values. Whereas the CSS and the styles you add here are added dynamically through JavaScript. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and save that and you'll notice the page refreshes. So let's go ahead and hide that. And of course it's still not working. Make sure I still have all that off. We do have our CSS there, so let's hide this. Okay, I will, I'll dig into that a little bit more to figure out why that's happening. I'm not really sure uh, right now. I don't want to dig too much into it. So as you'll see, we have all of these on here, and <clears throat> we set it to manual so that you have to set select the search to be able to show the different ones. Now, one thing I do want to show you guys, uh, which is an option, is whenever you're, when you have fields like this, not the section, whenever you have fields like this, the default value right here, to default value select on initial page load, you have a couple different options. You can either enter in one value, which would be you know the actual value of each one of these. So that for for the job types, it would be the slug. Um, if you entered in custom values, it would be for the data source custom values, it would be the value field. So you can either in, enter in one value. You can enter them in in a CSV format. So it would be um, you know full time comma uh, part time. So actually, let's. So you notice, you see how I did that. You'll notice these two were automatically selected. Uh, you have the option to do it as a CSV, or you can do just one. The other option is that you can select and to do all of them. You can just type in all. Now, in an update, I will change this from a text box to a drop down where you can select the actual options that are available. Um, but for now, this is kind of the way that it works. So. We want to leave it at all because this is the way by default it's handled by WP Job Manager. Uh, we don't really need any custom spacing. Go ahead and save that. Save it just for good measures. 
And there we go. We've recreated the default WP Job Manager uh, search and filtering. Now, as I'm sure you can tell from doing this, there's numerous ways that you can customize everything. Um, and we'll dig a little bit into that in other videos. I just want to give you guys a quick rundown and go through how you would actually recreate this default uh, search and filtering. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in some of the next videos.